All right, guys, welcome back. And I am ready to go along with you here on our second day for World War I. Uh, so today is going to be a little bit cool um, because we get to talk about some combat stuff with World War I, which is interesting and um, always, always kind of different to look at. So go ahead, do the warm up. Uh, once you've done that, then uh, let's talk about what we're trying to kind of achieve. Uh, we're, first of all, um, as you can see, the, the objective here, it says explore what combat was like on the Western Front and explain why it developed that way. Um, we are going to kind of focus on the Western Front uh, in Europe. Okay, so that's be like between France and Germany and Britain and Germany, uh, because the Eastern Front is pretty similar. It's it's a little bit more fluid than the Western Front is. Um, and then as well, today we're going to try to look at some of the broad happenings and, and kind of flow of the war. Uh, before we get into our mini lesson or some you know anything like that, um, I want to tell you uh, that I would like you to kind of get a really really good sample of what fighting in World War One was like. And so. Um, the Canadian War Museum has put together this fantastic choose your own journey story that I would like you to do. Um, so the button, the blue button down here, uh, over here, that, that is the link to the game. Um, but with it, okay, uh, take your time with it, read slowly, you know, process everything. Um, along with that, there's a battle report that I would like you to complete after it. Uh, so once you're done playing the game, don't close out of it because there's something that I'd like you to do. Uh, and that is right here. Uh, so I'm going to show you mine as like a model here and you know, we'll kind of talk through the, the tasks uh, of what we're trying to achieve here. So the, the point of this is that you're you're really getting a good feel for what it was like to fight in World War I. And so um, however the game is going to end up for you, okay, there is a way to actually live through it, but it's very unlikely. Um, there's going to be a te final telegraph or kind of message that the game is going to give you. And you're going to paste uh, a screenshot of that right in this first white space that's right here. Uh, then, down below that, kind of a message from beyond the grave, uh, you're going to take a moment and then because, uh, you know, for example, here was my telegram that says, Mr. and Mrs. Ridgway deeply regret to inform you that Private Nate Ridgway was officially reported killed in action on November 9th. Um, that doesn't actually tell us how I died. Uh, so I wrote down below here, uh, and I, this is what I'd like you to do, is the actual way that uh, – that, that you died or maybe succeeded. Uh, so I said, in reality, I didn't put on my poison gas mask when chlorine gas hit our lines. I couldn't see out, out of the glass because it was broken. Uh, so I threw my mask away. Whoops. Um, and then over here to the right, uh, I would like you to compose a final love letter back home uh, to a special someone. We'll, we'll assume that it will that it was written before you died or uh, were successful, uh, depending on which happens. Uh, and then in the letter, try to detail what fighting in World War One is like. So extra points for realism and soapy love letters. Uh, so once you've written that, uh, please turn it into Schoology. Uh, that it's, it's something fun that we kind of get to experiment and play around with. Um, now, as you go on, then we're going to get to your to our mini lesson. And really, our goal here is to explain why was fighting in World War One like this. So the copy of the notes is right there. Um, and let, let's take a look at some of our questions. So what does it mean uh, when we, uh, there's this very famous quote that is said that armies are always ready to fight the last war. Um, I'm gonna explore that. And then how does, uh, and this is a question we actually had for last time, but now we're finally ready for it. How does technology affect how war is fought? Okay, so. Uh, let's talk about this slide, which is very appropriately titled New Technology with Old Mentalities. Um, before World War I gets a going, the way that armies fought each other was very, very professional. And what I mean is, um, you know, like they, they would line up very properly, uh, you know, nice straight lines, you know, charging, uh, you know, they, you know, units were drilled to, you know, make sure that they were all doing the same thing at the same time. Um, and then on the other hand, we're going to hit World War I and we have to deal with the fact that there are just hundreds of thousands of casualties. So what the heck happened? Um, and 
uh, we, we kind of have to explain that and figure out, like, why do so many people die in World War I? Um, so if we kind of have this old mentality, you know, like the, the goal, like, you, you know, we have this, like, the, the goal, you know, you have a two-to-one advantage when you're attacking, and the, the defender's always going to have an advantage. We have all these kind of old rules that are about fighting. Well, we have to talk about the new technology that's introduced in World War I, um, and it's two things in particular. Uh, the first is machine guns, uh, and the second are mortars. Um, now... Machine guns are a relatively new invention when the 1900s kind of rolls about. Um, and even though most of the casualties in World War I are going to happen from, you know, things like disease and mortar rounds, uh, machine guns are really the thing that's going to change how and why World War I shows up the way that it does. Uh, and the reason is, is because with machine guns, you can, you know, once, once they come around, because of their rate of fire, they can simply kill thousands of men in a single second. And so lining up in these, you know, like where, you know, where your whole unit's standing together shoulder to shoulder and they're all very organized, that changes the game. Um, and then even when we get to stuff like poison gas, that, that's gonna, you know, change, change it as well. And so the problem that we're having here is that we have these old mentalities about how war should be fought. Like the only way that we can take territory is by mass human wave charges. And then we combine that with these, you know, the new technology of machine guns and, you know, barbed wire and things like that. And it just is going to result in just absolutely devastating casualties. And if you're left with that and you're a soldier fighting in World War I or you're a general, and you're thinking about this, you're like, okay, how can I constantly – think like what what can i do that can prevent all my guys getting you know shot down by machine gun fire and that's where they come up with the idea of trenches and we get trench warfare so the it, the war becomes much more defensive um in, in that respect so there's kind of a, a shift in tactics then to meet uh the you know this technology that that is one solution uh, uh, kind of we'll call it a solution um so then um what do you think is the solution then to breaking trench warfare? Is it going to be a change in tactics or is it going to be another, a new invention of technology that might make trench warfare uh, not, not, not the way to go? Um, talk to a person you know, next to you. If you're doing this online, um, think about it and write something down. Uh, let's go on because um, I've only got a couple of minutes left. I'm trying to get this all done in, in 10 minutes. Um, they do. Uh, the, you know, in World War I, what generals and military thinkers at the time try is they, they, they at first try tactical things like, you know, flanking, going around, and that causes the race to the sea, which we'll see here soon. Um, but really, they try to tech their way out of it. Um, there, there's new, you know, things like chemical warfare, gas that's invented, um, which is kind of a solution, except it's number one, terrible, and number two, it's kind of hard to control things like chlorine or mustard gas when you let them go. Um, so, you know, getting getting gas accidentally blown back into your own lines would be bad. Uh, tanks also get invented in World War One, And the reason why tanks are created is so that infantry could walk behind them. They could be just like literal, the tanks are just literal bullet shields. Um, but they're in World War One, super unreliable. They break down all the time. Um, and it also doesn't solve the issue of mortar rounds. Um, now, there are, uh, and speaking of new technology, aircraft that's invented, you know, for combat purposes. Um, but really, a lot of the aircraft fights that happen in World War I are aircraft-to-aircraft -aircraft dogfights. They're not really thought of as a way of breaking trenches. And so what we're seeing here with all this tech that tries to solve these problems is that they don't solve it. You, you simply can't just tech your way out of a solution of trench warfare. And that's why tactics matter too. And we'll talk about that in World War II because the German high command will come up with a solution for this, uh, for breaking trench warfare. Uh, so to end the block, um, I have a virtual museum here for you. And this is kind of is more for the ebb and flow of the war, things that I would love for us to talk more about and some we will in future mini lessons. Um, but this virtual museum, we've done these before. You know how to navigate them. You just go on to the next slide. Uh, there's five galleries, but you only need to do three. And there's a worksheet right here. You make a copy of it. And then there's uh, questions that go along with the three galleries that you need to do. Uh, once you've done the worksheet, okay, and you can see it right here, uh, you just turn it in below today's Schoology lesson. Okay, so uh, there you go. And again, you can pick any three you want to, totally up to you. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.